Google just dropped something completely mind-blowing with Gemini 2.0 Flash that's about to completely transform the way that we create and edit images. Today, I'm diving deep into what makes this update so revolutionary, showing you exactly how it works and giving you the coolest prompts to try yourself. Today, I'm diving deep into what makes this update so revolutionary, showing you exactly how it works and giving you the coolest prompts and edits to try yourself. So let's go. Although Google previously had a separate AI image generation model called Imogen, this has now been incorporated into Gemini with some awesome superpowers that make Gemini fully multimodal. This means that it's not only able to see and understand images that you give it, which models like ChatGPT and Llama could already do, but it can also generate new images based on the images that you already give it. This gives it the incredible ability to edit, manipulate, and iterate on images that you feed or generate with it. Now, ChatGPT could already do this to some degree, where it would generate entirely new images taking into account your feedback from what it had generated previously. But this always created a completely new image and created the meme where you would give ChatGPT an image and tell it to make it bigger, better, stronger, and continue to repeat it until the image had reached enlightenment. However, in each step, each image is a completely new image. Gemini, on the other hand, can actually detect and regenerate only specific parts of an image, leaving the rest of it intact. This brings with it things that were previously impossible, difficult, or cumbersome into the realm of being just a couple of prompts. One really cool example of using this is character consistency, where you can generate a character with Gemini or feed it your own character and then you can modify it, put it in different locations, and the model will decide whether it regenerates parts of the image or generates a completely new image, taking into account the traits of that character, similar to like an IP adapter would work. The cool thing about it is that the editing is conversational and precise, and we can make granular changes to specific elements without starting over. Now, I have a couple of examples here that I've tried previously, but we're gonna try it again from scratch and see how Gemini works with these features. Now, in case you're wondering, this is Google AI Studio. It's a free alternative to ChatGPT provided by Google, where you can use their Gemini model. To access it, just go to aistudio.google.com, then click on Create Prompt, and make sure that you have the Gemini 2.0 Flash Image Generation Experimental Model selected. And again, this should be completely free. Now, to get started and try out the character consistency feature, we're gonna grab a character description from the Prompt Crafters database. This is a database that I use all the time. It's a curated place where you can find a whole bunch of image generation prompts. They've got the prompts categorized into different platforms, categories, and styles. And for today, we're going to head into the character category. Let's see if I can find it. Here we go. Let's go into character art. And we can see here a bunch of prompts and some results of what those characters might look like. Let's grab this description over here and we can see some results of what the prompt looks like, in this case, in Midjourney and Stable Diffusion, and I think we can work with this. Let's come back here to Google AI Studio, and let's tell it to create an image following prompt. We're gonna drop it in and just see if we need to make any adjustments. I'm gonna remove the 8K and wallpaper, and there are a few keywords in here, like turning an art station that works particularly well with Stable Diffusion, but I'm just gonna leave it here and see what Gemini gives us. And this is a pretty good starting place. The image quality is absolutely phenomenal. Let's have a look at it in big. The lines look crisp. It's definitely a bit of a cartoon style. And unfortunately, like we see with a lot of other AI image models, hands continue to be a problem. However, that's nothing that's unexpected. So what can we do with this? Well, let's start by putting this character into different locales. Now, what's really cool about using this with a large language model is we can be as precise or as vague as we want to and the LLM will fill in the blanks and take care of helping you not only create the new image but also ideate through it. So let's give this the prompt and see what we get. And you can see here the use of the model actually applying the IP adapter like features where it has completely regenerated the character while maintaining a lot of the similarities between them. You can definitely tell that she could be the same character. Let's try telling the model something like, put her in a futuristic cyberpunk city. And boom. You can see this is one of the really cool features I was talking about where the character is exactly the same. This has not changed. What has changed is the background. So the model has figured out the placement of the character and in-painted the background. We can get a little bit more granular with our image editing 
And let's say we want to make her earrings hoops. And you can see here that the AI was able to detect the earrings and redraw them as hoops. And it did it well enough that it picked up not only the right ear, which was the obvious one, but also the earring here on the left. And we can see here in the original one, it's kind of got this fan-like feeling. So the model is very good at understanding elements in an image and making the necessary adjustments using entirely text-based editing. What's incredible though is beyond just the ability to understand little things that are happening in a frame and doing things like in painting, changing backgrounds, is the model seems to be able to actually create a world understanding of the image. And what I mean by that is let's do something like having the character give a different pose, which did not give me the desired result as we've once again had a massive change in her outfit and the location. So let's try this one more time. Okay, it took a little bit of finagling and we are having a couple of issues in the image, but this illustrates my point. In this first image, we've got this building over here in the background where you've kind of got this little spike, the windows over here, and in the prompt, I just said, get closer to the building. And over here, we've got the character right up significantly closer to this same building. Now, there are some issues here, as I mentioned earlier. However, the fact that it has that understanding of the street and her position in it is still a phenomenal step in the right direction. And I can't wait to see what other models will do with this technology and, and if we'll see some open source models bring this same technique and ability to their own models. We can play with this a little bit further by doing something like this. Ha 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 ha, that's a little too accurate. I wonder what kind of training data went into this model. So we can see here from the images how the model really understands the entire environment. In this first one, the character is standing still here. I then said run closer to the tree and it's very subtle, but the character is first of all, no longer standing, but running. And I would say they are marginally closer to the tree, but I said here now go get next to the tree. And here he is right next to the tree. We can see this kind of bushy area is still over here. The pathway is over here and it was able to adjust the character's position in almost 3D space. Uh, this one is not so good as all it did was introduce a path here. I was trying to get the character to the path over here in the distance, but maybe it didn't work out. So the model's not perfect. It does have a few issues, but as I said before, the level of understanding that we get with this model is definitely a lot more than we've had with any image generation model so far. Another really cool feature that you can do with this is because of its world understanding is do things like create recipes. So let's do something like create a recipe for vegan brownies because I'm vegan. Okay, so we've got this recipe over here. Now we can say create images for each step in the recipe. Okay, so we've got the first step here where it's showing us the different items that we're going to need for the recipe. Oh goodness, I did say vegan, so that's not really working. However, uh, I will say once again, it did recognize that we have a bowl. We've got this little cloth over here. Then we've got the next step. Then we've got the mixing step, putting it in the square pan. So, you know, there are elements that continue to be consistent image after image. Um, and with a few adjustments, you could take these images and put them in a recipe and they would definitely work step by step. Uh, it's very, very cool. Now, one other thing that this model is spectacularly good at is rendering text on images. And once again, with its world knowledge and its editing ability, that gives us a incredible opportunity to fine tune different designs and styles. So let's create here. Okay, uh, this is a good starting place, I guess. We've got a bunch of street signs over here and they're in the usual AI gibberish. Let's see if we can get it to change one to say milk. Okay, so that didn't work. Let's try something a little bit more on the nose. There we go. Now let's do something like change the font. I'll also note another really cool thing here is that the image has been edited. So this kind of has this more dark, ish tones. Whereas over here, it's given it a bit more of an edited look. The highlights have been cranked up. Shadows have been dropped. So the model can also do image editing, which is really cool. 
Now, unfortunately, it did not change the font. Let's see if it can do that. There we go. So it was able to regenerate the image with a completely different font style. And I don't think it re-inpainted the previous image. So again, it has this understanding from the first image that we created and it regenerated it with a new font style. Let's try and change the text. There you go. Well, it changed the font this time, even though I didn't want it to, but regenerated the image, changing the text. So you could technically probably make your YouTube thumbnail on this entirely using text prompts, getting your text in the image, even editing it so that the highlights are wherever you need the attention to be. The opportunities are endless. Like I said before, if you want to make use of this new model, you can go ahead to AI Studio and check it out here. You can work with the Gemini LLM for free. Alternatively, we will be adding Gemini to Kaiju Gen, which is my own image generation platform. While you can use it for free on Gemini, we will have it here also available in case you want to generate images with any other image generation model and then edit it or refine it using the new Gemini model. Or if you just want to support the channel and you want to get access to an image generation platform where you can find a whole bunch of image models, video models, there's no subscription. It's all pay as you go with as little as a $5 top up. If you found this video helpful, please do consider liking and subscribing. And if you want to really support the channel, you can either check out KaijuGen or come by my Patreon where we drop the videos ad free for Patreon subscribers, as well as a bunch of goodies such as exclusive workflows. I recently dropped a series of installers for, for the WAN video generator, which you can install locally on your computer or use on the cloud on RunPod, as well as all sorts of goodies. If you're having any problems, please do come by our Discord and check it out. We are always looking for people to share their work. And if you have any questions, myself or somebody from the team will try and help you out. Thanks so much. And I'll catch you guys on the next one.